Welcome to the WebIDQ video tutorial series. WebIDQ is the required companion software for all of the Biocrates kit products. The software guides you from sample registration and project management through data analysis, validation, visualization, and finally exporting results. This will be a four-part video series that walks you through the basic features and functions present in WebIDQ. While the tutorial is focusing specifically on the Quant 500 Excel kit, other kits can be completed in a similar way. These step-by-step -step videos will walk you through the process from registering your samples through data analysis and exporting results. WebIDQ is split into three sections that control different elements of the workflow. LIMS, the Laboratory Information Management System, Quantification, and Results. We will be exploring each of these in more detail in the upcoming videos. If you've already set up WebIDQ and are familiar with the basic interface elements, feel free to skip ahead to the next video. There are several interface elements that are common throughout the WebIDQ experience. We'll briefly discuss a few of them here. Most of the gray panes in the software can be moved, rearranged, and resized. WebIDQ will remember any changes that you make and automatically apply them the next time you log in. These customizations are unique for each user on the WebIDQ account. Most of the lists or tables in WebIDQ can be sorted by clicking on the header. Control clicking on a second header will sort by a second column. Clicking on the three line menu icon on the right side of the header will open up the filtering options. These can be used to easily navigate or find items in a longer list. You can also quickly clear a filter by right clicking on it. There are also a number of items in WebIDQ that can be right clicked for additional context sensitive information. For example, right clicking on a sample will give you additional options to copy or delete. You'll also find that most text entry fields in WebIDQ can be searched by typing in the field. To look for a specific item, simply start typing to see the field searched. Several sections in WebIDQ also have the ability to scale the level of information presented. You can do this by looking for the slider in the top right corner of most windows. For example, the plate view can have multiple displays with varying level of information by moving the slider. Finally, you'll notice that there are many question marks located throughout the WebIDQ interface. Clicking on these will open up the corresponding section of the user manual. Otherwise, the user manual can always be accessed through the user icon in the top right corner of the page. Operating procedures, also called OPs, are the instrument and kit specific parameters that WebIDQ uses to set up and process each kit. When you're starting a new WebIDQ database, there are no OPs loaded by default. Therefore, the first step when starting WebIDQ for the first time will be to load all the OPs specific to your instrument for the kits that you'll be planning to run. Start by clicking on the user icon and then selecting Import OPs from the menu. From the list, select all the kits or OPs that you're planning to use. Multiple can be selected at a time, and when finished, click OK to load these OPs. OPs also contain information related to quality controls and calibration standard lots. In the future, when new lots are released, the information can always be updated by reloading the OPs here. Additionally, if you start working with a new kit that you haven't previously used, you can always come back and load the OPs here. This concludes the first part of the WebIDQ video tutorial series, in which we looked at the different interface elements in WebIDQ and how to load an OP for the first time. You can review the corresponding sections in the user manual for additional information. In the next video, we'll be looking at how to set up a project in the LIMS section of WebIDQ.